All right. Hey guys, welcome to our team call. Tonight we have a guest speaker on our call who's really not a guest because she's also on our team too. I'm really excited for all the amazing content that she has prepared for us. We were talking about it earlier today and just it's, it's going to be great. So I want to start first with some recognition, announcements, all that good stuff, get that out of the way, and then hand it over to Christy to take the lead with this. So let me just share my screen really quick so you can see what I'm looking at here. Let me get bigger. Make it look nicer. Okay. All righty. So over here we have our leaderboard. Um, it does kind of look a little wonky because I stretched it out, but I'm going to start with our life changers of the week. Starting at the bottom with Success Club 2, we have Lynette Hope, Taylor Gross, Michelle North, Oliver, Lindsay Dressig, sorry if I'm saying your name wrong, um, Brittany Swanson with four, who I just edited because I realized you had four, so that you're down in the twos, um, so sorry about that. <laughs> Molly Bloom with two, Lauren Emmerich with two, Chelsea Wisbar, Amanda Viviano, Lauren Avon, Lauren Kinker, Chasta Borland, Amber Salmon, all with two. Then with four, we have Alicia Hendelson, Sarah Howley, Natalie Balsamo, Christy Kako. And with six, we have Emily Minovitz. I hope I said that right. And Emmy Schneider-Green. And with eight, we have myself. Um, right now, we have a total of 56 Success Club points. We totally can bust through that 100 and potentially get 200 by the end of the month. I have no doubt about it. Last month, we did. So let's do it again. Um, I know this is right now we're kind of it's like a little bit of a slower month for us But that just means that we need to talk to more people That means that we're gonna get more no's and that means that in getting more no's We're also gonna get some yeses with them. Too. So just keep talking to people if your name's not up on the board Don't get discouraged or, you know, um, Just know that you know, it's gonna take talking to more people and maybe going back to those people that you haven't um, talk to you in a while following up all of those things are going to get you success and get your name up here on the board Then we have our top recruiters um, With one coach we have Lindsay Dressig Lauren Kinker Lauren Avon Katie Lover Emily Minovitz Alicia Hendelson Chasta Borland Brittany Swanson Amber Salmon with two we have Sarah Howley Natalie Balsamo with three we have myself and then with five we have Emmy Schneider Green so that is our recognition. Everything just disappeared. I don't know what happened. Um, chat's blowing up. Okay. Oh, Taylor. Taylor has four successful four as of five minutes ago. So awesome job. <laughs> Sorry. And we've got we've got a, a round of applause from James in the kitchen. Um, <laughs> okay. So I wanted to really quickly before we dive into this call just give you guys a few announcements of things that you want to be looking out for in this month and the month coming up. Um, the first thing we have today is the day to register for that November to remember challenge. What this is, is basically like team cup where you had a group of five people, but this time you're just pairing up with a partner in the spirit of the double time workout that's coming out. You will be competing to get the most success club points and you will be earning three success club points for selling the double time challenge pack, which is pretty sweet, uh, which means you'll really only have to help two people to hit success club next month if they both do the double time challenge pack. Um, but with that being said, don't just completely change your game and only try to sell the double time challenge pack because that's not going to, um, it's not going to create success for you just focusing on that one product for the entire month because we have a whole library of workouts. We have a whole collection of things that are beneficial for different people and different, um, different goals that they have. So that one thing, it's not a one size fits all thing, but if you do have somebody who maybe is a parent or maybe is, wants to work out with their significant other and they both want to do it together, then I would recommend that to them. But don't completely forget everything you already know and just start focusing on trying to sell that one because it's three points instead of two. Um, so you need to pair up with a partner. There can only be one lifetime diamond per couple. Uh, I guess we're couples now. And you um, will be working together with them. You'll be registering in one region. So let's say uh, Taylor and I will be working together. I'm in the southeast. Taylor's in the northeast. When we register, we'll just be registering in one of those um, regions. 
So that's where you'll be competing within the region. You'll be in whichever region that you guys choose on. If you both live in the same one, then you'll, you automatically will pick that one. Um, there's also some type of charity thing that they're doing where you're going to be able to pick a charity and the top four or five teams, they're going to get money for their charity. Also the top, uh, I don't remember how many teams, but is it the, maybe the number one team, they get $2,000 to split evenly between the two of them. So that's an extra $1,000. Um, so it just makes sense to be a part of it. Also, this is how you're going to qualify for your success club prize. You're going to get a cool baseball cap that you can wear uh, when you go to baseball games or whatever. Um, so definitely make sure you have a partner for this challenge because it's going to help both of your businesses grow. And it's really great when they give us these opportunities to, you know, grow our businesses that we take advantage of them. So don't just say, oh, I'm not going to do it. Get with a partner, work together for the month, and both of you are going to grow uh, from doing that. Also. If you were not on the team call last night, because I see a few faces on here who were not, please go back and check out that recording. I've had so many people who were on that call message me today and say, oh my gosh, you know, like that really fired me up. I know I heard that some coaches, are, after they got off the call, they sent 20 invites. I had some coaches that went from like feeling like poop going to like blowing up their business and working really hard and having so much energy and being inspired. So if you're feeling like meh, Go watch the recording from yesterday. It'll really help pump you up and really help you see the vision that we have as a team for the rest of the year. Um, also, as you know, UK launch is on Thursday, which is three days from now. Um, so if you have people who are in the UK that you've been talking to, make sure you're spending the next couple of days to really getting down to the nitty gritty, making sure you know what they're going to sign up with, making sure you get their email, their shake flavor, getting all of their ducks in a row so that when it's time for them to get signed up um, on the 19th, if they're ready on that day, you can just plug them in, get it over with. Um, I'm predicting, and I don't want to predict this, but I'm predicting there will be some like <laughs> system things because everyone's just going to be signing up a million people. Was too short. Day, so yeah. just keep that in mind. Um, just have all the information that you need already so that you're not scrambling trying to find it and all of that stuff. And if you don't have anyone from the UK, do not worry. You can still be talking to them. It doesn't mean that if you don't have people to sign up on the day of the UK launch that you missed the boat. It doesn't mean that at all. There are so many people over there, and once we're open over there, it's going to be a little bit more uh, talked about. Maybe it'll be a little bit more familiar, and it may also be easier for you to start talking to other people over there too. So. Don't think that if you don't have like a whole list of people ready to sign up on the, the Thursday that you completely are out of the game for this. You definitely are not. You have plenty of time to be talking to people. And once we're open over there, you can talk to them for like however long as you want. You know, we still have people in the U.S. that need help. We still have people in the U.S. So don't just shift your focus to one area. Um, but also, you know, just keep in mind that we do have more opportunity now that it's open. I like you all. Um, and then Success Club, just wanted to mention, if you do not have Success Club yet, you still have time. We're at that halfway mark. Half of the month is over, or if you want to look at it in a better way, we have half of the month left. We, have, we still have time. Um, so just keep talking to people, following up with those people that maybe told you two months ago they were going to sign up and then never did. You know, we have all of those people in our lives, so just make sure that you are doing their follow-ups. I know it's like that one thing that we hate to do. We hate doing follow-ups. It's our big frog. If, I don't know if, you, if you haven't read Eat That Frog, you probably don't know what I'm talking about. But basically, the frog is that one thing that you don't like, the one thing that you hate to do. So you eat it right in the morning, and you just get it done. So make sure, make sure you're doing your follow-ups. And also, those of you who are in the running for your success starter ticket, there are a few of you on this call. Don't drop the ball on your third month. Summit is amazing. You have to do whatever you can do to make it happen. Okay? We're good? We're all going to hit Success Club this month? There's so many fresh faces on this call. And it's just really awesome when you, when you hit that goal in your first couple of months. Many of you who are on here were success starters, so you know what I'm talking about. And it's just Summit is something that you can't pass up. So being able to go for free is amazing. And all of you guys have the ability to do that if you're in your first three months just helping three people every month. Um, but, wait, I did have one more thing. Sorry, Christy. I forgot. I forgot I did this. I wanted to share the... 
Sorry. You guys a little more. So we do have a new two-star diamond coach. Oh. Emmy Schneider Green is our new two-star diamond coach. So I wanted to recognize that. It's our picture from the first day we met ever. And then this is, this is her now. So you it. can see. Let me see the room thing. Uh, oh, I, and we're all muted. I just muted whoever that was. Um, I just wanted to celebrate Emmy being our two-star diamond coach on our team. So congratulations to Emmy. Give her a round of applause. Um, I also wanted to celebrate the new Emeralds for last month and the beginning of this month. So our new Emeralds are Lauren Kinker, Nicole Redmond, Sarah Howley, Chasta Borland, Kyla Pease, Caroline O'Neill, and Michelle North. So congratulations to you guys. You are at that level right now where you are going to be starting to qualify for team cycle bonuses. You're going to be getting free leads when you hit success club as an Emerald. And also understand that just because you're Emerald right now doesn't mean that that's it. Like you just continue to build. You always have to continue to add coaches and build your downline and keep adding because as quickly as you add people, we all know that some people fall off the boat. So just keep that in mind. This is an amazing accomplishment that you've all done right now, but just know that it doesn't stop here. This is like the very small stepping stone that you have to step on if you want to continue to grow and you just have to keep adding to your, to your team. Um, and we don't have any new success starters there. So that's it for that thing. I lost the thing I was supposed to show you guys. So I'm going to look for it um, while Christy is talking and then I'll show it at the end when that thing that we were just talking about on the diamond call. Should I do that really quick now? What do you think? Yeah? Why not? All right, I'll be quick. While she's looking, can everybody make sure that you're muted? Because I don't, I think someone's missing. Sounds like somebody's eating something really crunchy. <laughs> it's what I keep hearing, like the crunching sounds. Um, all right, hold on, I found it, but it's not letting me click on it. Ah, come on. My computer sucks. Um, okay, well, remember yesterday on the call, those of you who were on the call, I was, I kind of made a comment within the chat and I was saying like, yeah, wouldn't it be awesome to earn an extra $500 between now and the end of the year that you can use for your Christmas gift, right? Does anyone remember that? It was kind of like in the chat and like physically announce it, but somebody had called it out. So I wanted to share this with you. It's something we're going to be doing the next three months. Well, two and a half months because we're counting this month. Gosh, oh, shit. There we go. Okay. So this is going to be something that you can participate in. I really encourage you all to participate in this. There's no reason why you shouldn't be participating in this because it's just going to help you earn $1,000 between now and the end of the year. And I don't know any of you that wouldn't want $1,000 between now and the end of the year. I'm pretty sure that that could really benefit you and change your life and give you a stress-free holiday, not having to worry about paying for gifts or anything. So what we have here is our holiday roadmap. I'm going to try to zoom in because it's like super small. Um, but basically, I'm going to post this in the Sweat Your Heart Out page. Also, it will be posted in your individual team pages as well. And this is going to be your roadmap between now and the end of the year. Each time that you help someone, you're going to fill out this line for the month of October. So let's say you help Sally and you got the All Access Challenge Pack. That's what that stands for. You just earned yourself $50, okay? Every time that you sign somebody up with the All Access Challenge Pack, the four people you're going to sign up in October, which is going to get you to Success Club, you're going to earn $200 for that. Now, come November, you're going to sign up people with the All Access Kickstart Challenge Pack, which is the one that comes with the three-day refresh. You can talk about it as far as doing it after Thanksgiving. You can talk about saving it for after Christmas, whatever you want to do with it, but signing up for all access kickstart challenge packs for $70. That's what you're, well, it doesn't cost $70, but you're going to earn $70 for each of those, which is going to give you $370, including these three little shaker cups or whatever these are supposed to be down here. These are the three Shakeology orders from the month before that continue. So when you get your residual Shakeology orders, you're going to get $30 each for those. You can draw a little X through those. Come December, you've got five all-access challenge packs. You're going to earn $50 for each of those. You've got six residual Shakeology orders. That's $30 a piece. That's $430, and all of that together is going to give you $1,000 between 
October and the end of December. So I'm gonna post this in the team page. This is something that if you want to participate in, we'll be doing weekly check-ins for this, but it really makes sense for everyone to do this because it's gonna help you earn $1,000 between now and the end of the year, and I don't know why you wouldn't wanna do that. So with that, um, oh, we have a second page. Yes, okay, all right, so we're ready for this call. Um, so before we, we start with our guest, I want to introduce her. I'm sure many of you know who she is. Those of you who are brand new may not. Um, this is our coach, Christy Kako. She is a diamond coach. She's the CEO and founder of Team Aim High, Aim True. Christy and I met on Instagram because of our Weimariners. Um, and she has put together an amazing call for you tonight. Every time I think about fitness journey and how to share your fitness journey authentically and being a product of the product, I always think of Christy immediately because she is so good at it. So I want her to share with you all how she does that and how you can be a product of the product and talk about the programs and the workouts and the shakes and all of those things without being a salesy, sleazy salesperson and being a real person. So with that being said, I'm going to hand it over to Christy. I'm going to make you the little spotlight, uh, spotlight video and you can take it away. <laughs> of course. Oh, now my dog's barking. Okay, so I didn't know that I was good at this <laughs> when you asked me to be to talk about it, but I guess whenever I was putting together, guys, I have a lot of slides. I make PowerPoints on the blog. And I was going through and combing through my old posts, literally up until the point when I became a coach 20 months ago. I was looking through everything, and I find myself pretty funny. <laughs> I was laughing the whole time I was making it because I'm a dork. And I just like to be myself and I swear a lot. So I, I'm not going to try not to swear on the video in case there's any children around, but I say the F word like daily on social media because that's just who I am. So, um, I need to get out of here so I can see my screen so I can share my screen. Um, but before I share it, so I guess I can share the first part and, oh, just kidding. I'm really bad at this. Share, share, slideshow. Okay, can you see that? And I'll just talk on this one for a little while. So, like I said, I became a coach. My first official month as a coach was March of 2016. And I was going back to old posts when I first became a coach, and they were very boring and they were very small. And the one thing that I want to say about, and I didn't really, I think there's only one Shakeology post in here. I'm not really talking about superfoods tonight. It's literally about working out and sharing your fitness journey. Um, don't post a sweaty selfie just to post one because no one cares that you worked out. I promise you, no one cares. If you are publicly known as a coach and you and people know that you work out daily, don't just post a picture saying you did your workout and call it a day because People are just going to scroll by it. Nobody's going to get any value out of it. No one cares that you got your sweat on, I promise. And that's what I was doing for the first couple months as a coach because, you know, I was like, hey, I'm working out. This is new to me. And I'm just going to share it with the world, except like the captions on all of my posts was just like, never miss a Monday. And did you work out today? And just super short, simple, but stupid things. So I don't know when the transition happened and I don't know when I started to, I guess it was when I started to become more comfortable with sharing on social media. And I post a lot now that I've been a coach for so long, but it's something that you need to become comfortable with like now, because if you're not posting and you're not talking about what you're doing, you're not going to attract anyone for one. And if you are talking to people behind the scenes, if you're not posting about what you're doing, they're going to creep on you before they say yes. And if you're not sharing anything on your on your newsfeed, whether it's Instagram, whether it's Facebook, whether it's your Instagram stories, if you use Snapchat, I'm not a Snapchat person. I have one, but I don't use it. Um, if you're not sharing what you're doing publicly, they're not going to believe you. Like, why would they do it too? So I'm just going to roll through here. I have a ton. Um, and I broke it down into categories. I went to school to be a teacher. So hence the PowerPoint and I like visuals because I went to school to be a hard teacher. Um, but this is kind of how I go about sharing my journey. And I didn't really ever have to think about it until I put this together because I just always 
and myself and I always just share what's going on in my day. And for a lot of you that don't know me, I think a reason why I was surprised that I was asked to talk about this is because I had a back injury in May and it was the stupidest inconvenience that I was just like bending over, taking, you don't know me, taking fish out of a cooler. And when I stood up, I stood up too fast and my back just completely, I could not physically stand on my own. I was out of commission for working out for nine weeks, I think it was. I think it was nine weeks. I was not allowed, like physically allowed to work out. I was in physical therapy for a little while and I do have a physical therapy post in here. But for me, being able to work out was like my outlet and I was pretty, not depressed. I don't think, I don't want to say I was depressed, but I could tell a difference in me and my personality and in my mood. And I know Carolyn's the same way because she wasn't able to work out for six weeks. And I mean, it's just how we are now because it's part of our lives. So if you didn't know me and you didn't know that I went through that injury, it's, it's pretty crazy to see that this is the topic that I have to talk about because I wasn't working out for nine weeks and yet I still shared certain aspects of my life to continue to show that I was still being a product of the product, even if I couldn't work out. Um, so again, I broke these down into categories and it's not letting me go to, there we go. So the first one is to create curiosity. Curiosity marketing is a big thing right now. If you're going through any new coach trainings, a lot of us, a lot of the leaders on this, on these teams, we have just re revamped our trainings. And if you're new, even if you're not new, you should go back and do it anyway, because it's all new stuff. It's all new content. And curiosity marketing is a big thing right now because you don't want to be plastering Beachbody all over your wall or your newsfeed or whatever you call it. If you are, no one's going to ask you anything. If you're saying exactly what you're doing, nobody's, is your person that you think you might want to talk to is just going to go to Amazon and buy the cheapest deal and never ask you any questions. If you're sharing what you're doing without exactly saying what you're doing, it creates curiosity, hence the word, but it, it gets people to start asking questions. And I love the first example that I have here because this. Insanity Max 30 is my favorite, not my favorite program, but it's my favorite program for this topic because what I did, and you'll see a lot of them, is, and I'm really crazy, my hair used to be really long, um, every time I maxed out, I wrote my maxed out time on a note card and I shared it, and the comment on this picture, she's on this call, she's a coach on our team, she even asked me, what does this mean, I've been trying to figure it out, I've had, when I was doing that program, and I was sharing this, these pictures every day that had different timestamps on it, I had so many people messaging me saying, what in the world are you doing? Why are you sharing these? What do those mean? What do these numbers mean? But I never once said it on my Facebook. I didn't say, hey, I'm doing Insanity Max 30, and this is why I did this. Now, I did max out, and this is a really short one. This is from March 6th, I believe, of this year. Yes. So... It was like my one year anniversary of being a coach. I still wasn't really that good at posting, but I really wanted this example because of the comments, because it happened on Instagram and it happened on Facebook. People were messaging me, asking me what in the world I was doing. And if you can tell, I didn't answer her question on my Facebook. I, well, one, she was a coach on our team. So I just messaged her and told her, but say she wasn't a coach and she was just someone that messaged me or commented and said, what in the world are you doing? Don't answer questions on your Facebook or on your Instagram. Just say a comment saying, I'll message you. Because if you answer them, then somebody else is gonna come and see your answer and not message you or come to you. They're just gonna, you, you just provided all of the answers for them. Um, this one's really, <laughs> this is a really gross one, but this is about my wrist and I get really distracted. So the chat box is what? Yes, see, Carolyn did it too. I'm gonna try not to look at the chat box. <laughs> Um, so I broke my wrist a long time ago, but the point of this is that every day that I was doing a workout and this was actually a shift shock, I would post the number, like I would hold up my number in my hand. So this was day five. And the whole reason that this, like you can see it now, look at my wrist, it's disgusting. So <laughs> when I was taking my post-workout pictures, I was trying to make the number five and be really cute with my hand. And then I started noticing how disgusting my finger and my, or my wrist looked. So I not only am creating curiosity because it was day five, but day five of what? What are you doing? And then I kind of told a little bit of my story and about 
why I still push play. And even though my wrist is broken and I have no strength and yada, 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 I don't make it an excuse. I just have to wear a brace and I'm pretty sure I have another one in here for it. But anyway, um, this was when I wasn't allowed to work out. So I wasn't allowed to work out, but I still went and bought new workout clothes because I was like, I needed that, that avenue that I needed to vent somehow. So new workout pants make me really want to work out, but at least I have my superfoods to save the day. So I was still out of commission. I had people a commenting because my workout pants were $5 from Gabe's. And if you're not from my area, Gabe's is just a really, really, really cheap store that you can get clothes at. And so I'm sharing that I'm still wanting to work out. I'm still doing things that I love to do. And I'm still consuming something that I've been drinking for almost two years straight because it's a big deal to me. And it's a, like a staple in our household. And here's another Max 31. So same thing, still more workout pants. Everybody always comments about my pants and my clothes and the timestamp. Um, I can't see my words because you guys are in the way. I'll put it over here and cover up that sweat mark on my face. <clears throat> I maxed out after eight minutes and it's just creating curiosity, but I'm going to move in. So this is my favorite category. If you know me, I have dogs <laughs> and including your family and your pets in your posts has nothing to do with selling a challenge pack, but it's showing people that you're a real person that you have a life, you're more than a coach, and that stuff happens no matter what. And chat box is blowing up. Gabe's is the best. Oh my God, Melissa, where do you live? <laughs> that you know about Gabe's. Anyway, we need to talk. Um, <laughs> so for me, my dog, well, Penny specifically, I don't think that I've ever taken any post workout pictures with Luna because they're like all over me. But whenever I would take pictures, <laughs> any other fur mamas out there deal with this post-workout problem. And like to this day, I mean, I get like sweaty, salty kisses because dogs just love it and it's disgusting. But I like to take pictures of it because I just think it's funny. And as you can see, I had so many people commenting on it. So this is creating engagement on my post and I'm finding other Ever, whether they're wine moms or not, but a lot of my friends that I've been looking for and finding and adding new friends, a lot of them have wines because that's just like the one thing that I connect to the most. Um, but it creates engagement and I'm a real person. Um, and that's my dog's tongue all over my face. Here's Luna. So not only did I include my dog and I find that when there's pictures of my dogs, that's when I get the most engagement just because people will like the picture just because there's a dog in it. Sometimes they won't even read what it is, what it says. Sometimes they will, but sometimes they won't. But this one not only has my dog in it, but I also was talking about how I was kind of talking about how some people, what did I say? I wish I can count how many ladies I talked to who say that they've been watching me for so long and that they wish that they could do this too. I'm always tying in something to what I'm doing. Stop using life as an excuse. You do have enough time. You do have enough energy, yada, yada, yada. And I'm just, I'm not just posting a sweaty workout picture with my dog saying that I worked out. There's not that there's value, but there's a story and there's something that someone is going to relate to. Even if I help one person, one person, whether, even if I don't sell them anything, as long as it starts one conversation and it did, this one started a couple. It, it's all, it's worth everything. My husband, we don't work out together. So this was something that, and Carolyn's the comment on it. I didn't want to work out, but this day Brandon was like, you have to. And so we did, but we don't work out together because we kind of hate each other when we work out together. We annoy the hell out of each other. We like, even if he's like, come on, babe, you can do it. Like it annoys me. Like, don't tell me what to do. <laughs> so we, know, we actually worked out together today, but this one was just talking about how we like, we hate working out together. And a lot of people commented on it saying that they were the same and it was just creating, um, traction on my post. It was getting people to laugh because we get each other on each other's nerves, yada, yada, yada. It's just a way to show people that you're more than just a coach. This is my dog again. <laughs> this was actually like two months after I became a coach and this one's about my sister. My sister lives with me, if you guys don't know that, if you don't know me. Um, 
but we were both doing what program I think we were doing 21 day fix extreme or something I'm not sure but we weren't working out at the same time and I walked in on her and she I noticed that she had heavier weights in her hands I think she had 15s and she typically only uses 10s and she was like no I upped my weights on a lot of things that I do that I did today so I took that and I was like I need to do this like if she can up her weights I need to up my weights so I up my weights using up to 20 pound weights that day and I just gave her a shout out even though she doesn't have a Facebook I gave her a shout out for thanking me to showing me that I could do hard things too. And it got 29 likes, well 28, cause I usually like my own post after so long to create more engagement. If you don't know that, <laughs> this isn't a Facebook training, but when you comment on something, even if you comment on something that was like a year old, it pops back up on people's news feeds because it's just creating new conversation. Don't send, that's distracting. I'm on a call. Brandon just sent me pictures. I don't know what they are. Probably my dog and he's in the other room. Um, but when you like your own post after so long, I'm never the first person to like my own post. And I used to really hate when people like their own things. Obviously you like it, you posted it. It never made sense to me until I became a coach. Um, and then sometimes the next day, if my face is in it or something, if I want to bring it back up and I want to kind of bring it to life again, I'll actually tag myself in it. And it'll pop that back up on some people's news feeds saying that Chrissy was tagging a picture. Um, this is another one for my dog. This is Luna. I completely forgot what it was like to have a puppy. And I legit, when she, I mean, she's still a puppy. She's only four months old. But when she was like a couple weeks old, not a couple, we got her when she was seven weeks old, eight weeks old. I literally had to plan my workouts around her like nap times because I she was at my feet. She was like a child. like, and so. I was just saying, you know, I didn't have to find time to work out when Penny was this little because my health wasn't a priority at that time. But now it is, unless my back isn't cooperating, because I always say, you know, I do listen to my body. My back isn't back to normal. But while Luna and Penny slept, I got my workout in. And here's my sister again. We did size together. There's Penny again with another Max 30 sweaty picture where she attacked my face. I didn't even know she was behind me. <laughs> and people love this. They love it. If you have kids, if you have dogs, if you have cats, any type of pets, any type of children, not type of children, any children, if you have a spouse, a sibling, whomever, people love to see that you're a real person. Um, so this is the category where I kept laughing at myself. <laughs> I messaged Carolyn today and I said, I might not get through this call without peeing my pants because I couldn't stop laughing. Because <laughs> you go back and look at things. I'm like, oh, I really posted that, but I don't even care. Um, it's really important to be yourself. You're the only, this is my favorite quote. You are the only you there ever is. You're the only you there is and the only you there ever will be. And it's from you are a badass. And if you haven't read that book, you need to read the book or listen to it, but you really just need to be yourself. People are going to relate to you because of things that you do. And if you try to imitate another coach or you try to imitate another person just because they might be successful. So you're just trying to do what they do. It's not going to work because it's not you. So you just need to be yourself. Don't worry about what other people think. I'm pretty sure the first post was from the other well, end of September. I said the F word like three times. <clears throat> and I was just over it. Like, I think this was the one week where I was, I'm, I said the F word like every day and my mom messaged me, <laughs> was like, you're a beautiful person, Christy, but it's really ugly when you say that word. I'm like, A, you say it too. B, it, if the people are offended by it, they're not my people. So they can just unfollow or unfriend and bye-bye. Um, I'm going to look at the chat. <laughs> Emmy. <laughs> I don't know if you saw it, but I, I made the word. I don't know if there's any kids I can't see. I did the F word in like really pretty writing. I was like, does this word offend you? If so, unfollow now. But anyway, um, it's just really important to be yourself. Like me attempting to get a yoga pose on camera and it just didn't work. And people love it because you're real. <laughs> and I fell and <laughs> it's just who I am. <laughs> um, the, I can't even talk right now. I'm like getting flustered. This one is about farting in the middle of my workout. <laughs> And I was like crying. I was laughing so hard because Brandon had to leave the room. Oh goodness. I'm like 
blushing right now. <laughs> you just have to be you. I remember this one. <laughs> <laughs> this is me. This is me. So it was about adding spinach and the power greens to my shakes and it was just making my farts lethal and it happened in the middle of the workout and he was like, oh my God, and had to leave. Meanwhile, he's a man and farts like this every day, but I do it. Big deal. Anyway, so it's just me being me and it's just me being funny and having a double chin with four sweat drops coming off of my face because I ate pizza the night before, but I didn't like, I just talk about me and I'm not perfect. And I, I had pizza last night. If you were on the call last night, I stuffed four pizzas in my face. Like, I just learned how to balance out those things. But at the same time, this was just, I can't, I can't. So, <laughs> um, oh, there's another thing. How do I open this? For six, you remember. <laughs> oh, goodness. Okay, so this was just me being silly while I was drinking my pre-workout, obviously. But it was just me sharing another thing that I drink. I don't just drink the shakes. I don't just do the workouts. I also use it. Well, not the whole performance line, but I'm obsessed with the pre-workout. I'm obsessed with the post-workout. Um, and it's just me. This was actually like two or three days ago. But this was me showing the world that I'm normal. My house is messy. I only clean it when someone's coming over. I have rules just like everybody else. I swear and it says like all the effing time. I, again, I can't see kids, so I don't know if anybody on here. But I wash the same load of laundry multiple times. I forget to make dinners. So we have eggs. My hair gets washed like twice a week. Do you see how curly my hair is right now? My hair is poker straight. <coughs> poker straight. After my workout today, I put it in a bun on the top of my head, and it's still damp from sweat, not from a shower. I should post about that. But <coughs> this was talking about how. I was so busy that day. I had so much going on. My dogs were begging me to go for a walk, but the one constant in my life is working out. And now that I can, because my back lets me, I'm not going to skip a workout. <laughs> Here's the post-workout. <laughs> oh, so that, this was just something stupid. Two things I bet you don't know about me. I have a 1950s Pepto-Bismol pink and powder blue bathroom, and it's awful. And I like to have my post-workout in the shower if I shower right after I work out. And then the hashtag says shower beer, no thanks. And, <laughs> oh, I just, yes, shower beers, <laughs> Brittany. <laughs> but it's just me being me. This is just really silly and more double chins and max 30s. And this one, I talked about my boobs. This was right after I was allowed to start working out again. So I was like, to 99.9% .9 of you, this just looks like another sweaty post-workout selfie where my boobs are about to eat my face. But this is a picture of a woman who hasn't been able to work out for nine weeks. And you know, I was talking about how I struggled during my workout and I had to take so many breaks and I did the push-ups on my knees and I felt like I was back to where I was started when I first started my journey. Even though I was 35 pounds lighter than I was in this picture, I felt like that 205 pound woman when I first started because I struggled so much. Do you know how many people related to this? And I get, I'm like squirrel. You should post about your shower whiskey. <laughs> people would love it. Um, but people are just, they relate to things like this. And then, I mean, everybody commented about my boobs. So <laughs> it's what it is, but it creates traction. It creates momentum on your post and it just keeps things going. This is just me. With really long hair. I miss my long hair sometimes. But another way to post about your workouts without shoving everything down people's throats is to sprinkle in your challenge group info. So I never say um, what I'm doing, but I always talk about when I'm doing it. So this was calling out a couple objections where you don't have time, you don't have the money, you don't stick to anything. I want my back muscles back because I don't have those anymore. Um, but it was talking about quit making excuses. This was still a post-workout picture, but I'm talking about my challenge group and I'm giving people, you know, a very last call to get in on it. And <clears throat> it's just something that I talk about often here. It's not a, or what well, actually it is, there's a PS, but I'm talking about 
my challenge group. So right now I have an ongoing group, actually. It's called the Happiness Project. We have themes every month, but it's an ongoing group. And the Happiness Project, that name is so vague that I'm able to change things up every once in a while without actually having to restart a new challenge group. But that was a Flex Friday. So I'm talking about, <clears throat> I don't remember the last time I talked this much. <laughs> I'm talking about the happiness project, talking about Flex Friday, talking about other people's posts in the challenge group, which I don't use that word aside from like team calls. I usually call it like my virtual accountability group, my online boot camp, my regular accountability group. I don't know that I've ever said challenge group lately. And then I said, P.S. There's still a few spots open for this week's enrollment. So I do do weekly enrollments. I don't do monthly. Um, and then I just add people in every Sunday night. <laughs> and, yeah. Okay. This was another one. This was when I was on vacation last August. Um, I was talking about yoga and I was talking about, this was whenever they were launching the three week yoga retreat. And I was considering running a free yoga group because the three week yoga retreat is in front of the payroll on, or in front of the paywall in, on VOD so people can do it within their 14 day free trial. Um, well, at that time it was a 30 day free trial, but now it's only 14. But I was talking about the yoga groups and I was creating momentum, talking to people about um, the fact that it's free, which people love. And I had a lot of people, not a lot of people comment or <clears throat> liked it, but I had a couple people comment and I ended up running a one week group. and two of the girls in that group turned into coaches. So it's always worthwhile if they're doing, if there's a new launch coming soon to talk about it. We have double time coming up soon. Um, I would start talking about it to people with, with kids. I actually had a girl sign up last week because I was talking to her about 80 day obsession. That doesn't launch till January, but I already had someone sign up for it because she was like, I have the money now. Just let me do it now. So I don't give you an excuse in January. I'm like, okay. Um, this was just another PS saying that there's one more day to sign up. And then it's just talking about my accountability group. And who's that? She, yep. I got another person for there. Day two. And I'm pretty sure this was shift shop. See, I don't even know. Yes, it's shift shop. This is when we started the affirmations. We started this right after we got home from summit. So I'm talking about, in our accountability group, how we're talking about our mindset, how we're thinking about how we look at ourselves, and it's how we should love each other, and how you, these affirmations, they seem weird, but we do them anyway, and they end up working out really. <laughs> I think I used aviary for this one, because I made the whole background black and white, and then, yeah. Um, but it's just talking about that our the accountability groups are more than just working out and fitness and being boring. Um, again, Fridays we flex apparently a lot. Um, <laughs> these are all at different time periods too, and it just happened to be when I was talking about the happiness project. I've been started. I started the happiness project at the beginning of August. Um, and that's how long it's been going on. So at the end, it says, if you're waiting to hear from me about the happiness project, I'll get back to you within the next hour. I'm going to take Penny for a walk first, but the enrollment closes at 2 PM. So <laughs> I gave a deadline. I took my dog for a walk because she's a priority in my life. And then I followed up with the people that were in it. Um, <laughs> yes, LI loves the happiness project. She's in it. She just won the last like two weeks. So not only are you sprinkling in your challenge groups because that's part of what you do, so is being a coach. And if you're actively being a coach and you're wanting to get the word out, you can do that through your workouts. And this was another Max 31, but <clears throat> it says sweat, side boob, tattoos, and rolls. That's how we roll. This is talking about my tribe. And this was talking about how my team are amazing. And the fact that I get to talk to them daily, support each other daily, we empower each other and help each other succeed in our business. It's just saying like your vibe totally attracts your tribe and these girls are the shiznit. It was just talking about being a coach. I'm not saying, hey, come be a coach with me, but I'm just talking about how I feel with my team and people relate to feeling. <coughs> my throat is so dry. 
So this is the first time I ever met Carolyn. Um, I was in Florida and I'm pretty sure we did like three workouts this day because we worked out in the morning and then we went paddle boarding. And then that night we realized that the new size live, um, workout was available. So we went to the workout, her gym. Oh, that's a lie. <laughs> I did meet her at summit first. This is the first time I visited her in Florida. Anyway, so we went to the gym at like 10 o'clock at night to do the new size live <coughs> dance. And it was so much fun. And there was a creepy guy working out in the gym and we were soaked. And anyway, so I'm talking about how being a coach, you know, everything in life is crazy and it's crazy how social media works because I never would have met her if it wasn't for this job and my dog and just all these. Oh no, we did aerial yoga that day. Just kidding. Um, anyway, this is my first Flex Friday as a stay-at-home mom. So I, I did leave my job. I am a full-time coach. This is where I live now, where I work, what I do for a living. And this was the first time I was home on a Friday full-time. So I just shared being, being home by myself, being with my dog. People love it because of my dog. I had just cut my hair too. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. I had really long hair and I chopped it off after I left my job because I was like, new hair, new woman, let's go. And so I'm talking about working in my office. I'm attempting two a days until we go to Punta Cana, which I'm pretty sure didn't happen, but I don't. Um, this was after a workout. I had 30 seconds between the end of my workout and a team call with my team and our, and my, um, corporate sponsor, Lacey. She did a call for us and we talked about goals and we talked about, you know, what you had to do to get to certain ranks and yada, yada, yada. And it was just a lot of fun. And it was very like, it was awesome to see my team so invigorated and so excited about the year. And I was just sharing that I loved everything about it. <laughs> this was about Brandon. And again, at some point, I guess we worked out again because we typically don't, but He's been so supportive through this whole thing. And there's been months where I've slacked in my business and he notices and he will make a comment, but they're never mean. And he's always been my rock. And so I just gave him a shout out for a letting me, this was actually my, I don't think it was my announcement for leaving my job, but I had intended to leave my job in June of this year. And because I was accepted to go to the Punta Cana trip, it was weird way that I couldn't go to the trip and stay till June and jaw anyway. So we agreed that I would leave at the end of March. And this was just a big shout out. And the very end of it, I said, are you what, are you ready to live your life by your design? Stop watching me do this and take action. You can, if you're willing to work for it, message me if you want to hear about our newest opportunity. <clears throat> my throat is killing me. I'm not even sick. I haven't had my shake yet. I should have made it, but then I wouldn't have drank it. So then you want to talk about pain points and objections. I'm pretty sure most of these are about my roles because <laughs> I have them and I embrace them. But this one, I just, I talked about how I shared this picture in my, one of my accountability groups. And I mentioned that I felt so strong until I looked at this. And the first thing that I saw whenever I looked at this picture was my belly. And I felt so strong in this workout because this was shortly after summit. I didn't work out at summit once I, because I couldn't, my back just wasn't cooperating. And actually I wasn't allowed to either. And a girl in my group in the quotations, this is what she said. Wow. I love this pants. Isn't this funny how we automatically see the most negative things about ourselves. And then I thought, look at her go before I even read your description. I legit would not even have noticed your belly before reading it. We are so hard on ourselves and it wasn't until somebody else in my accountability group pointed it out to me that basically I'm crazy and I need to stop it. And she was right. So I shared it and I just wanted to share, you know, the, the struggles that I was having with myself because I'm not perfect. I don't want to be perfect. And I don't want people to think that just because I'm a coach and I work out daily and I drink this crazy drink every day and I always look so happy that I'm, I'm not like, I'm not perfect. And People need to see your pain points and your struggles too. 
<laughs> this was just after a workout that I did with my sister. We did size together and it was just like, you can't lose weight or get fit just by dancing. I was drenched after this workout. And that's all this was about was saying, if you don't think you can lose weight by dancing, go and do the routine that I just did and tell me that again. These were reasons why I didn't want to work out that day. I was up since six. I worked a full day. I ate, a di I don't even remember what I had for dinner the night before, but apparently it was all the carbs. Um, I didn't get home till 9.30. I'm tired, but I had goals. Day 19, and I just, it was 10.30 at night. I'm usually in bed by then. And I did my workout, even if I almost threw up my dinner. And it was terrible. But, oh, I do remember, <laughs> this was when Carl came to Pittsburgh. And the night before, we went out to dinner, and we went to a gourmet grilled cheese place. And I got, like, a Thanksgiving grilled cheese. Yeah. Stuffing, bread, everything. And it was delicious. This was a post recently when this was like a candid that my phone, because I had a timer set on my phone to take a picture and I didn't get into my pose in time. And I almost deleted this. And then I shared why I didn't delete it. Um, I was very, I love this post. Thanks, Carissa. Um, I was very scared, not scared, but I just, Obviously, when you look at yourself in the mirror and you look at things that you have that you don't want or that you want to improve, and it's the first thing that you see, you always critique yourself and you always are so hard on yourself. And I almost deleted this and then I had to tell myself that there are other people out there like me and that there are other people out there that need to hear what I'm struggling with and need to hear why I'm struggling. And I don't know who that is, but can you see me? I don't know. Um, so anyway, I just shared that I have roles. I've been working really hard. I've lost almost 40 pounds at that point. Now I finally have hit my 40 pound mark. I've lost 40 pounds since I started my journey, but I still have roles. And I have roles when I sit down. I have roles when I can't squeeze too much. I have roles when I'm bloating from eating way too much chips and queso and guac. And that was for Shannon's bachelorette party when I'm not wearing the perfect pair of pants. Rolls, 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 and then I used the hashtag give me some butter, and apparently that created some traction because people thought that was funny. But it's taken me a long time to accept my body, and people need to see that you love yourself, but you're not perfect. I'm still working hard to make these rolls a little bit smaller, but I'm not ever going to have that ideal body that I made myself think I would when I started my journey because society has put this this stick figure body on a pedestal and everybody thinks that's where they have to get and you just have to get to a place that's happy for you. <laughs> this is kind of a jab to people that don't have good service or I've had a lot of people tell me that they couldn't work out or they couldn't do anything in our accountability groups or they couldn't join me on my journey because they lived in a shitty area. So do I. And this day it was snowing and we had terrible storms and we had no power or not no power we had no Wi-Fi and we ended up using, we dug out some DVDs and we still did our workout. And the people that are giving me these excuses that they can't work out because they can't stream workouts through Wi-Fi, I was just tackling that objection that yes, you can, you can still buy DVDs, even though now they're starting to get rid of them. But um, my first program that I ever did becoming a coach was 22 minute hardcore. And I did it with my husband. So we had the DVDs and we plopped one into the TV and we got our workout in. I have two collages like this. And this was whenever I wasn't allowed to work out. This was in May. It was about a week after I hurt my back. And I wanted to show people that I'm still here. I'm still doing my job and I'm still, you know, making sure that people understand that you are not perfect. And especially social media is not perfect. This was showing people that if you stop comparing yourself to what you see, because what you see is not reality, it's perfectly planned out from wardrobe to angles to lighting. And I took these pictures literally seconds apart. Seconds. <coughs> I have rolls and I don't have rolls. I have good posture and I don't. Like it's, you're beautiful. Don't let anybody tell you anything else, especially yourself. And it was just me trying to say that I'm still here, I'm not allowed to work out, but I'm still a coach and I'm still sharing my journey and I'm still influencing other people and I'm still helping others get what they're doing. Call to action. Pretty sure this is the second to last. I think I have one more after this. 
These are posts that you have where you end it with a question. It doesn't have to be a call to action in regards to your upcoming group or if you want to be a coach or whatever. It's just a question to get people going. This is actually from today. <laughs> this was my post workout from today. And the very end of it, um, one actually, it's about Ship Shop. I did Ship Shop today. I did Speed 35. And the last time I did this workout, I modified the entire time because I wasn't, I, it was like right after. Um, right after summit and I couldn't, I still was really hesitant on working out and I don't know when that was. Oh, bye Taylor. Um, so <laughs> today I didn't modify it all and I just pushed myself and the very end of it, it says your results are outside of your comfort zone. What are you willing to do to get there? Now, it might not get a lot of traction, it might not get a lot of likes, it might not get a lot of comments, but believe me when I say this, people are watching you all the time. They're waiting for you to not post one day, they're waiting for you to just fall off the grid, they're waiting for you to fail. So if you might, if you don't get a lot of comments, if you don't get a lot of, and I'm pretty sure there's a lot more now, because I did this a long time ago, but <clears throat> this morning, it happens and people are watching, I promise. <laughs> this one is just me being me, but I talk about how the fact that I just did a lower body workout holding 20 pound weights in each hand. That's 40 pounds, which is what I've lost. And I was exhausted the whole time. And, and then I started to question, how did I get around with those extra 40 pounds on me? You know, almost two years ago, just walking up the steps, walking around every day. And I said, I have no idea how I did it, but I never want to feel that way again. Are you exhausted? I just asked a question, a simple question at the very end of it. It's not about, hey, come join my group. It's not about me being a coach. It's not, I'm just wanting people to relate to me because I was there at some point too. <laughs> this was whenever I went to physical therapy for the first time and I'd never gone to therapy before. And I just asked, has anybody gone through therapy before? How was it? This is still me kind of sort of working out because I, this was all I was allowed to do. But this post got so much engagement and I talked to most of these people via private message. But it's a like just constantly ask questions. What was this one? This was just asking people what foods they struggle with. So even though it's a post workout picture and I'm talking about my workout, I'm also talking about how I, my maxed out time was caused by gas and poop grams because I had burgers and fries the night before. But I don't regret them because it was delicious and I know my self worth and I don't base it on food, yada, yada, yada. And then I asked, what foods do you struggle with? And I talked to a few people privately about the foods that they struggled with and about how they can get their nutrition back in order. Um, this was like yesterday, no, last Wednesday. What is today? The 16th. So this was five days ago. In the matter of 25 minutes, and I talked about how Chris calls himself a Smurf, a SpongeBob, and donuts. But I asked, how in the world do people, do ladies work out with their hair down? That was a whole different kind of intense because I didn't put my hair up. I didn't do it today either. And it was like, I don't even know. But I'll tell you what, at the end of it, my hair was soaked because it was just touching all of my face. So this is the last category. I think I only have four left. What we do is really, to, and honestly, it's, I love just motivating and inspiring people and just showing them that they can do this too and that they're not alone and that you know, you're beautiful and you're worthy and you're loved. And, um, this was the other one. This was last Thanksgiving and this one on Instagram, I'm pretty sure got like seven or 800 likes, which is like, I never get more than like 50. So I don't know how it happened, but it was just showing that literally these were taken in a matter of seconds. And it was right after my workout. And as soon as I was done with this picture, I went and stuffed my face with food because it was Thanksgiving. I was with my family and that's just what we do. So <laughs> it's just showing people that you're beautiful, showing people that I love how I feel after a workout. And the only person who stands in between me and myself or me in a good sweat session is myself. This is my gym where the spectators have four paws. And the only person I need to be better than is myself. Um, I think this is the last one. It says, do you have rolls when you sit down? Chillax, everyone does. You're still beautiful. Yeah, it was. So it's really just being yourself. And I'm going to look at the chat really quick. Yes, Brittany, do it. I, I don't even remember what we were talking about. But um, 
that was just me in a nutshell and maybe crazy and just being myself. And it, it, it's not, I shouldn't say it's not hard because getting comfortable with sharing who you are on social media can be a big deal to someone who's not used to it. But at the same time, that's how you attract the people that you want to talk to. And if you're someone that swears, swear, because unless you also have another job, were you someone who used to post a lot before you became a coach? No. <clears throat> my dog, yes. Um, myself, no. Before I was a coach, my Facebook and Insta actually, I didn't even use Instagram before I became a coach. My Facebook was my dog all the time or something else. It was never me. I was never in front of the camera and I never shared anything about my life. And even to this day, I don't share super personal things. I'm not someone to like air my dirty laundry on Facebook and I get super annoyed when my family does. I'm like, what are you doing? That's no one's business. Just share your journey, what you're doing. I did have one and I had to like go back and see like a couple things because it was really old <laughs> and that's how you found me. Um, but just get comfortable with posting and it, it doesn't have to be three to five posts every single day. Just post once or twice just to get used to it. Post once a day until you get used to it. You don't have to go straight out of the gate hardcore because that's just what we say you should do. Get comfortable with sharing who you are, being yourself. Don't try to, you can follow other coaches just to see what they're doing and to see how they're sharing their posts, but don't copy someone else's stuff because it's not you. And you're, you might start attracting people that you're not really going to get along with because they don't, you didn't either. See, you mean either. I never posted on Facebook. Um, they're not going to relate to you and you don't want to find someone and help someone. I mean, you want to help everyone, but in reality, you're not going to be able to, you can't post to talk to everyone. And if you are in a training, do your avatar training and, <laughs> and we all just share dog videos and cat videos. It's fine. Um, and honestly, before I became a coach, I completely hated coaches. <laughs> I didn't understand why they shared. I'm like, why do they post so much? I don't get it. And yeah, I guess before Facebook I did, I was in college. So there was a lot of drunk pictures and party pictures and me being, do I post after every workout? No, no. Nope. It depends on the day. It depends on my picture. Did I get a good one or not? And usually there's like 40 in my camera roll because I take so many. And usually it's the first one, but no, I don't post every single day unless I am doing something that I'm tracking. So one thing that I loved, um, Molly, I don't know if she's on the call, but whenever she was doing 21 day fix extreme, or I don't know if it was the extreme version or not, but every single day you are, hi Molly. She would share, she would hold up her fingers. So it was like day one, day two, day three, day four, day five, yada, yada, yada. And until she couldn't share any more fingers, she would hold up postcards that had the numbers but people are watching yeah, until she got to 11 and she couldn't hold up anymore. People are watching what you're doing. And if you're sharing something where you're saying this is day one out of 21, day two out of 21, day three out of 21, if you miss day four, they're going to question and they're going to wonder where you were. But if it's not something like that, no, I don't share every single day because most people know that I work out every day. Um, it depends on the day. It depends on what happened that day. If something happened that's worth sharing, like today that I just, I pushed myself harder than I have in a long time. And I don't know, but no, I'm not every day. I think every day is a little excessive unless you're doing something along those lines. Um, do I find better success with the albums? I haven't done an album in a long time. Cause I don't know. I don't, I don't think I'll ever go back to albums. I did an album for, I think the last album I did was when we did the ultimate reset and I, I just shared all my food and I tried to do an album. I think it was for hammer and chisel and then I didn't end up finishing hammer and chisel. Um, but I don't like albums anymore. Um, I don't know. I think that cause I feel like in an album, they're not as not that they're not authentic, but I feel like a like a, a real raw post that just came from nowhere and it's not in an album just feels more real, raw, and vulnerable versus something that I feel like I have to plug into because I shared something about it. 
Um, have you had success with your Instagram stories? You're good about doing those. I have had a few people um, through my Instagram stories, but I also just started doing them not too long ago. I'm not very fluent on Instagram stories yet, but I'm working on it and I'm trying. And I took a lot of tips from Alex's Instagram call a couple weeks ago. If you didn't listen to it or if you weren't on it, make sure you watch that recording because it was really good. Um, do you post every day your workouts on your Instagram stories every day? I typically talk about my workout. I don't always, sometimes I'll post a video, but now that we can't have music, I really kind of hate it. And I don't really want to post my workouts, but I do like if I'm drinking my pre-workout and I'm doing something, I talk about going to do my workout. And then I do share my sweaty selfie on my Instagram stories every day, just saying that I did it, but whether or not it makes it into a real post um, in my feed or in, on my Facebook or on my Instagram, it just depends um, on the day. But I do share every day on Instagram stories. Does anybody do Facebook stories? Because I don't, and I don't know that I should be, but I know that whenever you're doing Instagram, if you go to add a picture or a video or whatever it is, when you go to like add to my story, it gives you the option to add to your Facebook story too, because you know they're one and the same Facebook owns Instagram. So I might, I don't know. I don't know. Because it's not like it's any more work. It's just one more click and you can go. Um, let me see if I missed anything. Does anybody have any more? I'm loving that there's actual questions. I'm just scrolling up to make sure I didn't miss anything. No games in Vegas. Mm. Oh, you live in Jersey. <laughs> Listen, Linda. <laughs> Sorry, I'm totally reading what we had. Uh, I think we got all the questions. I was skimming through it as you were talking, and I, I think you got all of them. Because I was going through it while you were speaking, and I would have told you. <laughs> okay. I just, I mean, you totally should post about your whiskey because you'll find people. That's funny. <laughs> oh. um, I think I got everything. Does anybody else have any questions? Good thing. Yeah, I think I got them all. Yes, no. Was that good? Because I feel like I ramble and talk a lot. No, thank you. You had a lot of really concrete examples, which I think was great for a lot of the coaches to see what that looks like instead of just kind of hearing like, be vulnerable, be yourself, post about this. Like it was great for them to actually see what that looks like. Um, so thank you for taking the time to put all of those slides together and gather all of your stuff. I think it was really cool that as you were doing it, you also kind of got to see how much you've grown as a coach over the years and how your posts have kind of changed from when you started to where you are now and things like that. So thank you for, for doing that and putting it together and sharing that with us. I'm sure that everyone has uh, things that they can take away and start implementing. I don't know if you had any like action item you wanted to, to add, but you can add that in the team page. I'll post the recording. If you think of anything you wanted to make us do, uh, we can do that. All right. All righty. Well, thanks everyone for hopping on the call. Thank you, Christy, for leading our call and sharing all of that with us. And we will see you next week. We have Nicole, who will be leading our team call. Um, same time, same place. So we'll see you next week. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye.